다 너무 뒷, 뒷문쪽에 있는 거. He's just right over here, seeing where his enemy is. Yeah. He's literally on the other side there. Now you need it. Run free, run free! Covering down this road.
So uh, gentlemen, what you've seen here today, the training that's been conducted behind me uh, by the Buffalo soldiers within 1st Battalion, 17th Infantry, uh, they conducted an attack to seize uh, the village or site uh, held by enemy personnel behind me. Um, they came in on helicopters, they landed on the helicopter landing zone just off camera here, and then closed with and destroyed this village in order to identify enemy personnel as well as identify any potential sensitive materials that they need to secure uh, and then to exploit to prevent proliferation uh, into other you know, third party actors. But a majority of the training that we've conducted today is always to ensure that we're ready to fight tonight as we know we have a very important operational mission here strengthening the alliance between the United States government as well as the South Korean government to ensure that our strength and our capability is able to secure the Korean Peninsula and ensure we're able to accomplish our nation's objectives that it asks us to. So with that, if there's any further questions, I'd be happy to answer them at this time. This is our today. Absolutely. So for today's exercise, you see behind me, there's also a striker in the background as well. A lot of what we do as a striker organization or part of a striker brigade combat team is both mounted and dismounted. So a lot of what we've practiced today is, as you saw, we came in with uh, the helicopters to air assault in as one method of insertion. We've also used our striker platforms to augment our dismounted infantry on the ground as a fire support platform to ensure our dismounted infantry squads can get to the objective as quickly as possible to apply as much combat power as possible to destroy the enemy. So a lot of the skills we've been working on today is our fire and our maneuver. You know, what we call in the Buffalo is our Buffalo basics or as we fall under the 2nd Infantry Division, we consider those our fight tonight fundamentals. I would assess the readiness levels of both US and ROCA forces are, are at, at, at an outstanding level. Um, I would assess that any impacts from the previous COVID pandemic have had no impacts whatsoever on our readiness levels, our ability to train in both a unilateral or combined environment. Uh, and quite frankly, in the four and a half months that I've been here, I've been exceptionally impressed with our ROCA counterparts, and it's been an absolute joy to, to partner and train with them on a consistent and frequent basis. Absolutely. So the main goal of this training, and it's actually been over the last four days, so we started several kilometers north of our current location at an, uh, an attack position with all of our, our command and control elements. We've had roughly, uh, I'd say, approximately 700 United States and, and ROCA uh, personnel staged in that location with our vehicles and different platforms and weapon systems and we've systematically cleared against the enemy that they fought here as the, the enemies retrograded back but ultimately we've cleared from north to south to this current um, this current objective which was our ultimate march objective which we assessed had the largest enemy presence and the potential sensitive materials that we wanted to uh, seize and then exploit but the ultimate goal truly is to ensure our interoperability as a combined element between US forces and then ROCA forces that should we ever get called to go to, um, to defend South Korea or to potentially go north, that we are able to work together in a synchronized and effective way uh, to achieve our, and accomplish our objectives. And I, I would assess based off the last four days of training, um, we've absolutely accomplished that goal and uh, have definitely increased our proficiency and our lethality with respect to those fundamentals. So at the end of every objective or end of every training iteration, before we move on to the next phase, we conduct an AAR after action review where we, the leaders and the OCs that you've seen working around with um, white engineer tape around their helmets, we come together, we assess what we've seen, and then we pull in the elements and we conduct a very deliberate and methodical discussion of what we saw, what we saw on the objective, how we executed our, our tasks that we wanted to accomplish, and then we look to iterate and implement those into each subsequent iteration to ensure that we're, we're not looking for perfection, but we're looking for progress to get better. Uh, and then I would assess at the, at the end of all of that, uh, tomorrow we're gonna do a collective AAR to assess our training, to ensure we achieved our training objectives and then are ready for whatever next training evolution that we're gonna have. Is the training that we've conducted over the last four going on five days now. It's been a fantastic opportunity to build the strength of the U.S. Um, and uh, Republic of Korea alliance to ensure that we're ready to fight tonight uh, no matter what occurs in the surrounding areas. That's a great question. Uh, I think the, 
the frequency of these exercises are, are paramount to ensuring the readiness and ensuring, like I mentioned, it, you know, uh, fight tonight, we don't consider a catchphrase. It's, uh, it's an absolute reality that we live every day while we're here, deployed here. Even though we're here for only nine months, we look to gain and maintain readiness every single day and exercises like the one we're accomplishing right now is a fantastic way to achieve that. Um, it ensures soldiers as they rotate onto the peninsula understand the environment. As you can see, the terrain around us is significant. It's severely restrictive. So the sooner we can assimilate to the, the Korean peninsula, the terrain that we may need to fight in, that's going to ensure that we're, uh, we're ready to accomplish the task that we're given in the best way possible. Uh, I've been exceptionally impressed uh, with our ROCA counterparts. Uh, in the four and a half months that um, my battalion has been here so far, uh, we've trained no less than four or five times with, our Ro with various ROCA counterparts, um, both with armor units, with tanks, with striker units, with um, similar Korean equivalents to our striker, uh, as well as light infantry. Um, and they're an exceptionally professional and disciplined force. Uh, and I'd be privileged to, to fight side by side with them uh, should we get called to do so. Um, I, I would offer as we observe what's going on in real time uh, in, in Europe that is absolutely influencing uh, the tactics, techniques and procedures that we observe in real time there and then how we can build that into things we may see on a future battlefield here. Specifically as a lot of platforms and systems in different countries go from manned to unmanned, we see a lot of that uh, proliferating in that conflict right now and that's definitely uh, informing how we would act or react to those type threats in this environment as well. I think it's an awesome opportunity, quite frankly. Um, it provides a, um, a lot of reality and importance to why we're here. Uh, you know, we, we recognize the sacrifice we make coming over here for nine months, leaving our families back in the States. It, uh, it brings into focus that the sacrifice is worth it for this, to ensure the strength of the Alliance, to ensure the, the strength of all of our collective futures. Um, it, it adds a reality um, to why we're here, what we're doing, uh, and why we truly need to be ready to fight tonight. Not the priority the target's way out there and we're going to provide like a walking wall of fire we're going to go two sections all four guns facing that direction yeah we're basically just going to go <laughs> Contact the last position, all right? 
They're going from is, the east, right? Yeah, they're coming from the east. Right, so well, break contact. Here, have them out there. 50 meters up in the fucking wood line from the sign. Yeah. They're moving to the left. I saw so I see one. There you guys. There's a knife. There's a knife on my butt. Where the fuck? Where's your monitor at? Yeah, you're at 2-1 up here. You're gonna him off this way. We have They have grenades, so be careful. Alright, let's go! Go! Oh! Let's go! Let's go! Hundred percent chance in the next twenty four hours we're gonna hit by gas. All right, so I got my mask on the hip. All right, so you good, good job, guys. All right, now you don't need to carry all your MVC to suit with you everywhere you go, but it needs to be relevant. All right, and did you guys walk that ridge from the yeah, road? Depending what position they get. Yeah, good. So we know there's two avenues of approach. Like this dude right here, and then that ridge line connects to the flat part of the road. So
third and second. Third battalion this way, second over there. Charlie Company is to protecting the, re the rear of the third battalion. And then Bravo Company is protecting the... All right? Everything goes at 1600, all right? The reason why you're here is the biggest... Gunners. Let me see the gunners real quick. But yeah, I mean, so get with Thad, you know, Captain McClinton, but then also you need to be talking to Nat. You need to know exactly where you're at. You have to fall back. Sorry. Then you gotta... We're unlikely to be able to displace. There's nowhere else to, for us to go and be responsive. Yeah. That was pretty athletic. Nails just here to catch the one person who falls on their ass. Dom here at KCTC. We're covering this hill and the ridge lines coming off of it, and we're not going to give it up. Seize the high ground. Hi, this is uh, PFC Torres here in uh, KCTC. We are here, um, we are protecting the spot, waiting for stuff to go down. Uh, we are on standby and uh, we're hoping uh, to show, uh, you know, to show other people what we can actually do. And we are here to protect uh, the United States of America. So. I'm Captain Eric P. Malm. I'm the Gladiator Company FSC Commander. We're here today at our CTCP at KCTC. This is my distro platoon leader. I'm First Lieutenant Olivia Wilson. I'm the distribution platoon leader. Um, this is the distribution platoon AO. Depending on how many troops, three to one roll.
You guys walk that ridge from the yes, road? Up yeah, good. So let's seize the high ground, we're gonna seize it today. All right, we're gonna be up there doing that. And I Your way. Left arm. Left hey, start both coming. Weeks. Yeah. You got you go out here if you need me. His legs are good. Hey, do we have security right, on that clear. door down there? Hey, you were pulled security on. Hey. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I'm tracking. Hey, that's not that is not Crosby. Right. That is Sergeant Shepard. Crosby. Run, run, run! Hey, we're up here, man! 
Go to the next station. You start putting your stuff in that bag.
rails when you're walking through as well. Um, and wires, I know we tried to pick them up, but you don't want nails going through anyone's feet. 